Uh, as Wilson alluded to, fans leading the stadiums, the stadium's quite interesting, Lars, isn't it? Miguel Delaney saying now thousands of empty seats. Rory Smith, I would guess the stadium has been two thirds full for most of the second half. That feels like it's a, quite a generous estimate. It doesn't necessarily bode well for what already feels like a weird World Cup. Yeah, and it was a good example of why it's a good idea for, for actual journalists to go and cover these events because it was... I was watching sort of my timeline on Twitter and you had the journalists who were there posting photos of all the empty seats. And meanwhile, on the sort of uh, on the broadcast feed, you kept having close ups of the fans who were there saying, oh, they're making a great atmosphere. So, I mean, it is, there is a there is a value to having people there telling us what is actually going on as opposed to what they're trying to like portray it as in, in the, on the official feeds here. They're all hypocrites because they're enjoying five-star hospitality. Yeah, it's true, um, it's true, it's true. You know, the, the share, Latin, sharing a house with Barney, nothing's more five-star than that. Yeah. <laughs> and having um, to pay over the odds for bottles of water and horrible sandwiches. But it's also given the speech about how it, it's a big tent and we're all in it, and it's all a party for everyone. I feel like slightly contrary to that spirit if everyone <laughs> fucks off the minute you're losing. It's not, it's not really good. If everyone's having a party together, presumably could at least stay to the final whistle, even though your team aren't aren't winning. Yeah, I don't know. We, I was at that Spurs Ajax game in 2018 <laughs> or whatever at, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, and it's a right bind to leave. And I must admit, by about 60 minutes, when Spurs were actually hammered with no chance to get to the final, I was like, oh, I could sneak off. I could sneak off now and, you know, walked walk to the bus stop to get the the uh, the two four three would you leave uh, half an hour early in the opening match of a world cup in your home country under any circumstance <laughs> no i, I, I probably, probably don't think i would no but the traffic did look absolutely horrendous on the way in didn't it you know there's no metro going to that stadium and that's just fascinating to see having not known a lot about I know all these stadiums have been built, but they've literally built that stadium and just not built anything else anywhere near it. Like, it looks like it's on on Mars. Isn't that going to be the massive problem? Because the 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 distance between all the stadiums and the times that the kickoffs are at is going to make. It, there was only one game today, mm. um, and the traffic was as as reported that bad. So I wonder what it's going to be like when we start having three and four games and. You know, people crossing paths to get from one game to another, et cetera. Um, I wonder how well that will be reported. But this lastly is one thing, a point I'd like to make about the Qatari team. And there's nothing against them, especially because they are what they are. And again, as we've covered, their international results in recent years are decent. And I think they're better than what they showed here. But this game is also an example of why I think international football is great. Because it is one point, one sort of small sliver of internet of modern football where money doesn't actually magically fix everything for you. You no matter how wealthy your country is, you cannot just go out and buy yourself a good international team. You are what you are. And I, I think that's uh, why it remains a tremendous antidote to to some of the ills of, of the modern club game. 